Hey everybody, it's episode 466 of PodQuest. Hey. hey! It is Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. I am Chris. With me is Druton. Hello. And Walnut. Hi, I'm here. How's you guys doing? Doing okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm doing. Are you That's sure? About it. N- neither of you seem like you are actually doing. I mean, I'm doing the best I can. Look, I'm tired. I'm honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest, I'm getting a little burnout out of Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, I get that. Uh, the, and like it the, it's worse for you because you have like you have like a schedule. Like like you are trying to play that on stream what at least twice a week. Three times a week is what I'm trying. But it's going down to probably going down at two times a week. Yeah, that's that's probably a good idea. Like like break it up a little bit cause it, I'm sh- I'm sure the the people watching it are also probably getting a little burnout on it because you know, you can only you can only watch that stuff so long like without having something else going on in between. It is somehow. And I've said this to a few people and one at least one person has agreed. Uh let me let me figure out how I how I've worded it. Let me find the text of how I've worded it. Um it is somehow one of the better games I've played in a long time, as well as one of the most mech games I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah, that seems about right. Like, let me tell you. It's yesterday I played for three hours and did nothing. I feel like because they, I got to a story beat at the end of Monday that left us off into a very they 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 get to these points where there's just very bad pacing just to fluff the story and it is just bad. It's bad and like, but like then there's all this other shit that's really cool and then then I also found some extra stuff that just unlocked after getting to where I was that I was just like, oh, let me try this out and I, I was in there for like a half hour. Or something like that, and it was just yeah. I'm getting I'm getting a little burnt out of Final Fantasy. I very much am enjoying that game a lot, but also at the same time I'm like, man, good to be sitting at twelve sessions on Sunday. This is a long game. It is an RPG. I still argue it's not quite an RPG. Every game's an RPG. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know, guys. It's been a week, and it's only Wednesday. It's, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I get that. Rich, what's on the agenda? Huh? Oh, we're getting right into it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Miss Marvel dying and then coming back, apparently. Um, then, uh, Cobb, you played Pikmin 4. Uh, I've been watching Secret Invasion. I'm all the way caught up to episode 4, which is today's episode. Um, and then we all watched Boss Level. And then, Cobb, you read you read Trevor Noah's I did. These are things. Uh, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I put this Miss Marvel thing in because I think it's kind of funny. Um, so... This is in in the comics. They recently killed her off. Uh, I think it was in May or early June. They they made a big deal about the fact that they killed her. Yeah, the, like, like the worst part is, so she died in an issue of Spider Man, which she has been essentially a background character in, um, popping up every so often as um, Kamala has been an intern working at Oscorp, where Peter also works. Because right now, Norman Osborn, he's a good guy. Yeah. Um, but she was there, like, working there as as an intern or lab assistant or something like that, um, keeping an eye on Osborn. And being a superhero, some stuff goes down and, like, she joins the fight with Spider-Man and basically sacrifices herself for Mary Jane. Um, so she dies. It's, it's a whole big thing. Um, the following issues of Spider-Man in very Spider-Man fashion, like... Pete blames himself for it. Um, this past week, they released, um, I believe it's called Fallen Friend, um, as which is supposed to be like the fallout to her death. Mm-hmm. Um, and from the time she was introduced in, I want to say it was 2014, might have been a little earlier or a little bit later, um, she has been an inhuman. So she yeah. got her powers after um, the Terrigen stuff got spread around the whole Earth. Um, and at that time, the Terrigen Mist was killing mutants and turning anyone with an inhuman gene, unlocking their power. So, you know, almost a decade of her being an inhuman. Yeah. Um, Marvel just announced, um, with this week that she will be coming back in, I think it's September. Um, so she's not dead for long, which I, there's a movie coming out in November. Um, there was no way she was going to be dead for long. And, uh, she's coming back as an X-Men. Well, yeah, I mean, they, spoiler alert for the Miss Marvel TV show that has been out for a year now at this point, almost. Wow, that uh, has been a year. Shit. Th- 
I, I think I'm not really sure, but I it think, was June last um, year because it it yeah. ran. It start. It either started right before or right after Obi Wan, and then sh- there was nothing through July, and She Hulk ran starting in August. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, spoilers are allowed at this point. It's been a year. You've had time to watch it. Um, they end by calling her a mutant, right? And they play the X Men, the the '90s X Men tune to it too. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot yeah, the tune. I loved it. It was great. But but yeah. So like. They they've already started like alluding that she is one of the first like mutants in the MCU. Um, we don't know if if they're going to retcon anybody else as a mutant or not. Like who fucking knows? Mm. But yeah, now they're doing it in the comics. They, I, they are just further and further getting rid of the Inhumans in the comics too, which I think is kind of funny. Like yeah, around the time that um that there was a movie that then became the TV series, um, they were pushing the Inhumans hard. They had multiple ongoing series. You had characters like Kamala that got introduced, became hugely popular, and she is really one of the only Inhumans that's still floating around in more than a, oh, here's like a cameo from Medusa in like a random issue of Fantastic Four. Um, so it's just, it, it's funny and kind of ironic that they're just like, yeah, we're going to take that heritage away from her and we're going to make her a mutant. Um, I mean, are did they say she's going to be back as a member of the X-Men, or did they say she's going to be back as a mutant? So they said that she's going to be part of the X-Men. Um, See, I then I don't think they're taking away her inhuman status, because it's the same as Peter Parker as the Bagman being a part of Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four. So, yes and no. Um, like, Spider-Man has... Like, Bagman was not part of the Fantastic Four. That was just when Pete got rid of the symbiote suit. Um, the only thing that the Fantastic Four had that were clothes was a pair, like, one of their jumpsuits, but they don't wear masks, so Johnny Storm being Johnny Storm gave Pete the, the fucking paper bag. Mm -hmm. Um, but, so, mutants right now in Marvel, um, they can be resurrected. Yeah. Um, they have a process that only works for them, um, where they basically have, um, they have backups of everybody, (laughs) and... What, whether you know you're a mutant or not, they have backed you up just based on, like, identifying your X gene. Um, and there's an issue of X-Men that came out after she died where Cyclops finds out and it hits him hard. And then that, so that finds out that she died. And then apparently in this Fallen Friend issue, I haven't actually had a chance to read it yet, but I saw the, um, the panels from it. Um, he does not go to her funeral, but, um, a bunch of other Marvel characters do. And as some characters are leaving, they confront him about refusing to go in. Um, and he makes like an offhanded comment of like, 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 you'll see why or something like that, like alluding to he is going to bring her back. Um, and that like maybe he knows something about her heritage that she doesn't. Um, and the, the whole thing with Cyclops, um, cause it doesn't make sense to anyone listening who hasn't, who didn't read all of it. Um, young Cyclops, when they were time traveling, was a member of the champions with Miss Marvel and a bunch of the other young heroes. When that Cyclops went back to his own time, they did like the um like the Doctor Who like 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 pocket watch thing where the adult versions of the X-Men all got the memories of their younger selves while they were in the present. So Cyclops has all the memories of the time he spent with the champions. So like when one of them died, like it hit him harder than it probably would have hit Cyclops had that not happened. Yeah. But yeah, like, I have a feeling that she is either not going to actually be an inhuman at all anymore, or they're going to be like, she was a weird inhuman that also had an X gene. I mean, that's possible if the inhumans are what they were in the MCU, which is like, um, Kree and human blood together, it's possible that it's Kree human and Kree and mutated human blood together. Yeah, exactly, and... Like- the weird thing with Miss Marvel was because I don't think they're Cree and human blood, but um, the Inhumans were like created. Um, oh well, yeah, in in the comics, if I remember correctly, the Inhumans were created by the Immortals, right? Or something like that. The Eternals, not the Immortals. The Eternals. No, no, no. The no the the Internals don't create anybody. The Internals were created by the um, uh, the big fucking robot things, the Celestials. Yeah. Um. But uh, no, the. The Inhumans, I believe they were created by the Kree. Like, that is a very Kree thing, is to create, like, a, a sentience and then try to kill it when it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to. Um, mm-hmm. But, 
the the thing I've always found weird about about Kamala in the comics, um, like technically the the inhuman gene gene is genetic, so it's like passed through your family. You would think that like somebody like further up the food chain of her family would have ha- also had even a mild reaction to the Terrigen Mist, but from what we've seen, it it didn't hit anybody. Um, and it's just like, well, like why is that? How, like how did it pass that far down the genes because like we've seen like grandparents and stuff like that from both sides of her family like how did it pass that far and not actually hit anyone else in her family unless maybe well, she was a mutant and the terrigen affected her differently i mean that that could be possible or um you know they weren't thinking <laughs> i mean that that is actually the answer the, but like the, I'm, the I'm introduction using... was 14 years ago or 10 years ago they, yeah, they yeah, weren't thinking yeah. as far that 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 much. I mean, absolutely. And like when you create a character like that, you really don't know how they're going to to work out. Like there have been plenty of new characters introduced that are already gone. Like it, it, since Miss Marvel was introduced, there have been numerous characters, like both like teenagers and older, that like kind of came and gone in a flash. Like they they just didn't click. But you you get characters, and frankly, it's especially characters of like color different like religious background stuff like that that like you didn't have a lot of in mainstream comics that like people are seeing like themselves in that they they are then gravitating to your your miss marvel your um your uh miles morales like stuff like that so like it makes sense that like the 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 ones being introduced that aren't just the same white kid are like picking up a little more popularity because we've got a hundred years of the same dumb white kid getting superpowers um but I had I had a, a thing I was working on with with the inhuman thing. Oh, but like there's absolutely no reason why they can't just be like, oh yeah, no, like her mutant power is like adaption. Like the dude um he was in X Men First Class. Um Darwin. Like his his mutant power is he adapts to things. So like um there there was a comic at one point, like a lot like years ago, where a villain showed up that there was no ability that he could get that would let him beat that villain. So his body just involuntary, involuntarily teleported him to the other side of the world. Mm-hmm. Like, his mutant ability is surviving. If, like, you throw him, if you, like, put weights on his feet and throw him in the ocean, he's just gonna grow gills. Like, yeah. um, like it could be something like that. Like, her mutant power lets her adapt to hostile environments, and for her, it adapted to her being... An inhuman, like it, it made the Terrigen actually have a reaction for her, or um, uh, Franklin or- Richards, the the Fantastic Four's kid, like his powers, his powers were so much that he actually altered reality and made himself a mutant, like unconsciously to explain why he was as powerful as he was. Or, or maybe Cyclops finds a way to just bring back Inhumans via the X Men's method of re- reviving. Or maybe Cyclops, because he's a fucking idiot. Let's get it right. Let's get it correct right here. Cyclops is a moron and only cares about himself. Um, maybe whatever he does, well, himself and a few other people, because obviously he cares about Kamala if, if he's doing all this. Maybe he finds a way to bring her back, but it in turn stops all the X-Men from being able to be revived, and therefore X-Men's lives matter now. <laughs> as yeah. dumb as that sounds. So I, I know they are shaking stuff up with the X-Men. I don't know if they're going to get rid of the whole resurrection thing. They um, should, because that's dumb. So the whole idea with the resurrection is it's not like they're just... It's not like they have, like, infinite lives. And they have put, like, stipulations on it. Like, if if they die in certain ways or certain places, they, they can't be resurrected. Um, But it's not that they can't resurrect people that aren't mutants. It's they don't have actual consciousness backups of anyone but mutants so um they just had an event i forget what it was called um because all their events just run together at this point um it was the it was the it was x-men versus avengers versus eternals or something like that Mm -hmm. um yeah it was (laughs) axe um and they had to fight one of those celestials and they actually resurrected captain america in it but it was a plan where he basically went and sacrificed himself but they had done like the the brain backup ahead of time so that they could resurrect him. So, like, the only way that they would have one for Kamala would be, like, if she had an X-Gene the whole time, and they just didn't tell her. I don't know. F- 
fucking X Men, man. Fucking Marvel Comics. I hate. I mean, them yes, so the, much. the X Men are such a weird fucking disaster of things. I like, hate them so much. I hate, like it's gotten I hate. to the point. What well, if X Men's turn bad? If, if mutants turn bad because they have like amnesty on this island, um, they don't kill them because they can just be resurrected. They just bury them in the dirt forever. Wait, what was that? Um, if if like a, a mutant breaks a law, essentially, um. Because like the resurrection, like there's there's not really anything hurting them by like killing them because they would just they can just bring them back later if they want to. Um, they bury them in the dirt as like their punishment. Okay, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, well, the island's alive, so the island can basically like suck somebody like deep underground and just keep them there like in a stasis. So that that's how they incarcerate like the bad guys now. Yeah, it's just like yeah, we're just gonna put you underground. M- maybe we'll give you another chance. Maybe we won't. Depends how bad things get. Um, but yeah, I just think it's funny that they're just like, all right, we got to get the comic book character in line with the movie character so that maybe people give a shit. Yeah, which is just kind of dumb because, like, the people who... Uh, honestly, I'm 99% sure the people who read the comics don't give two fuck, or Not don't give two fucks, but realize and know... Actually, you know what? Never mind. They're fucking nerds. They're going to be so mad because, oh, this doesn't meet her origin. So never mind. Ignore everything I just said. Because, yeah, the people who read comics need everything to align exactly the way it would be. Otherwise, it's the worst fucking thing they've ever seen in their lives. So, you know what? You're right. Marvel's making sure to keep people from being neckbeard. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Because, um... God forbid, something be a little bit different and not the way you remember it being. Oh, no. Well, look, man, you can't retcon things is, is basically the problem. Everything has to be exactly how it was always written. But it's not no a retcon. Changes. It's not a retcon if it's a new universe. I know. Or I, its I know. own I'm, universe. I'm, I'm kidding. I know. I'm just I'm just saying. For for the fucking nerds out there who are like, oh, her, for instance, Kamala's powers. Oh, no. They're different. Yeah, well, it's a fucking different universe. Okay? So who cares? Just watch it. It's a good show. Yeah, and, like, I like, like the way that they... Like what they did with her powers, yeah. Because um, like because she, she can, you, she can still straight. use similar things with the the hard light stuff. Yeah, and, and stretched out skin looks terrible in in the in in TV. Exactly, in movies. It looks like, terrible. So. Like Fantastic Four is not going to look good when they get around no, to that. Not at all. Or if it does look good, it means that a bunch of artists um, worked way too many hours to make it look good, and yeah. were probably underpaid for it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh but but enough complaining about about comic books. Um I I tried the demo for Pikmin 4. Nice. I have it's it. It's a It's Pikmin. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I it, figured. It's fucking dark, but it's fun. Dark is in like dark or dark is in like scary dark or like, or or like, like you're downing, s- you're s- downer dark. you're s- you're essentially sending these like sentient little like helpful creatures to go like fight things Six times their size and potentially die. I and, like, mean, they die in horrifying ways. Hasn't that always been Pikmin, though? That's oh, yeah. No, I'm not I'm not been, saying though, this so. game is, is dark. I'm saying Pikmin in general. It's delightful and also very dark. Like, I mean, Pokemon, you... It's fucking chicken fights. But they don't and die. dog fights. <laughs> but you're still fighting animals. I mean, I agree. But, like, when was the last time you played a Pikmin game? Uh, the Pikmin 3. Okay, so what? Like, so when ten they, years ago, when they die, they kind of like fall over, and then like their spirit actually like wiggles out of them and floats away. I, um, not always, not always. Sometimes they drown, and other times they just get straight up eaten, and you see several ghosts come out of the mouth of the enemy that they get eaten from. That's true. Apparently, there is one color of them that that doesn't happen. The ghosts, like they're, they're when they die, there's no ghost. There, there are ghost Pikmin uh, that you can only encounter at night. Um, oh, but, like. Yeah, they can do different things. They like glow green. They're they're new. They just incorporate them in this one. I I think that was one of the was that was that the direct or was that just a, a one off thing that they showed them? I think that was on the direct. You know what? I was I was not paying attention to a lot of the Pikmin stuff because it's like I like Pikmin. Like I've seen enough. Like I'm going to at least give it a shot. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I played probably like two and a half hours of it. Um, it's actually it's a very long demo. Like I didn't even finish it yet. Um, cause it, it's kind of open ended. Um, and it is the beginning of the game. So your, your save will carry over if you play it. Yeah. Um, but it's basically, it's like the introduction, the, the tutorial, and then you're collecting energy for like your ship and stuff. 
So as long as you don't collect the the final amount of energy that like the it, the demo tells you when you load into it, um, you can just keep exploring and doing stuff um around the, the areas that you unlock. Um, so in this one, you're I'm pretty sure three you weren't Alamar either, but I no. didn't play a ton of three. I think I don't think you were Alamar in two. I I think Alamar was just in one. You know, no, you were Alamar in one and two. And you had his friend, because two was when they added multiplayer. And then three, it was like three, there was like three playable characters. I can't right. remember. I played it, it was on Wii U that I played it. It's five five plus years ago. Um, yeah, so this one, um, you actually create a character. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, you are on a planet where a bunch of, like, a team of explorers came looking for Olimar. And they then crash, so you're basically rescuing them. And rescuing Alamar and potentially rescu- rescuing some other random people that have just been lost on this planet that is probably Earth. Mm. Um, it's it's definitely it's yeah. been confirmed. There. Been oh, have they, have they just flat out said it's Earth? I think they, well, I like, because it, it's the same planet, I believe, each time. And I yeah. think they've come out and said it was. A- yeah, I mean, the, the tutorial level of the game, you you play as Alamar and you play as him in, like, a person's house. Mm-hmm. So, like, there there's that. And and one of the items I found was just a it was a Nintendo um, Game Boy Advance yeah, SP exactly. yeah but uh but yeah I, I, classic Pikmin stuff um you do you get the dog right away so like when you first get him he's small so you can't ride him but he does grow to the size where you can ride around on him and he, mm-hmm. he is how you jump and stuff um and he's also used for like breaking certain things that the Pikmin can't break and he's got more strength and you can um. You can train him to get stronger or faster or a number of other things. And then you, you know, you, you find Pikmin all over the world. Um, I think it, I think you always get the red Pikmin first. Yeah, it's always red. Yeah. So like, red, it's you get a, generally like red, blue. I think red, he usually goes like red, blue, yellow, black. That sounds right. Yeah. Like I, the red were the first ones. I've gotten a ton of those. There's always the, the red flower coin things all over the place. Um, the second ones I got were, were the ice ones. So they're blue, but their bodies are actually made out of ice. Um, and then I got, um, I got the yellow ones, which are electric. Yeah. So they did change it up a little than this one because like they, they take more of their elements. So the blue ones are like are more covered in ice. The electric ones should be more lightning looking. That's why like the ghost ones are ghosts. They yeah. The, the, the yellow ones get like the, um, like the, the electricity going around them the way like Super Saiyans. To, like yeah. Super Saiyan Two did, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's similar puzzles and stuff like that. There's a, there's like the day night cycle where you can only explore during the day, or the game yells at you. Um, and like the dog, if the dog gets scared, it will um become hesitant to do things for you. Um, but if you go in into the underground, um, the time stops moving, so you can spend as much time as you want underground, like exploring. Um, and you know, there, there's little puzzles and and hazards to try and figure out, like. Um, things that your Pikmin can't cross that maybe you can that you have to find ways to to maneuver through. Mm-hmm. Over overall, it has been like like the little bit I played was a lot of fun, and I I think I will probably pick up the full game when it comes out. I think Friday. Yeah, it comes out on the twenty seventh. Yeah, next week. Oh, I thought it was the twenty second. Um, is it the twenty first? Yeah, I think it's the twenty first. I all I know is that this and Remnant Two are released on. On or around the same day. Like, if you pre-order Remnant 2, you can start playing Remnant 2 tomorrow. And I know um, Pikmin is released, I believe, the 27th. I thought it said the 27th. It's the 21st. 21st. Yeah, I just, so, I just like, looked. So, yeah, this both Remnant 2 and this are, av- are can be played starting the same day, basically. And it's, I've just been like, this fucking sucks. Because I, I want them both, but I also still haven't gotten Zelda. I'm still making my way through Final Fantasy. Fucking... God, there's Jedi Survivor, fucking too many games. Play I games think, faster. I think Sarah said she's played 145 hours of the new Zelda. Wow. Yeah. I got bored with it almost immediately. Like, I think I have maybe, like, 15 hours into it. Like, the the building stuff is really cool, but, like, there's very few things you can build early on that are of any, circ- like, consequence to the game. Well, and that's like why that, you gotta play more to get but to like, this stuff. They really want you to build stuff early on, and like the building early on is not fun. Um, and yeah, like, like I, I opened up the entire map, and then I'm just like, oh, you know what? Like, I don't want to go do any of the shrines or the, um, the, the couple of temples they have right now. Like, I'm just gonna 
We're going to put this aside and come back to it later. I could never do that. Put it it's aside, just, I'll come back to it at the beginning. It's, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's not a bad game. Like, it's very well done. It's got all the good points of Breath of the Wild and then some. But, like, it's just not what I want from a Zelda game. And, like, it's not the type of game that I wanted to play at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, Pikmin, though? Pikmin's delightful. Um, yeah, they, those games always happen. Yeah, like, I, I did find it, it's one of those games where, like, I can't necessarily play for, like, a long period of time because it does get a little monotonous at points. Um, especially because early on, like, the Pikmin don't just come back to you. So, like, if, you, if you're sending Pikmin to take stuff back to, like, the ship or whatever, you basically have to follow them so that you can, like, recover them all so that you can continue exploring. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's like, that's like a small issue. And like, so far, none of the areas have been so vast that doing that really hindered the gameplay. And every time I mean, you kind of, like... that was always Pikmin though. Like you needed to get the Pikmin back to the ships and load it up before nighttime. Otherwise any Pikmin left on the field would get eaten. Yeah, exactly. But like, it's not just like the nighttime thing. It's literally like, if I have a Pikmin pick up something, it goes back and it just stands there. So like, there are certain times where it's like, all right, I'm not going to send anybody back to, like, carry things yet because I want to actually, like, see what's out here so that I can, that's can like, also, figure out what's worth carrying back right away. That's also always been Pikmin. That's true. I have not played Pikmin since Pikmin 2, so it's well, been I 20 mean, years. Pretty much, but it's that's ha- always how Pikmin was. You you send them to the thing to carry, and then they carry. The idea is you're supposed to go with them when carrying things because they can't defend themselves. So you have to help protect them and defend them while they're carrying things back. Yeah, I mean, at least early game, like, there are no threats between items and ships for the most part, unless you didn't clear out the threat ahead of time. Mm. But it's one of those, like, as you're going, if you see an enemy, you kill the enemy, and then they, they'll take the carcass back to the ship. Yeah. Um, the nice thing is, like, at least on, in the overworld, the ship will move pretty frequently. So it hasn't been like a slog to get back to it. You just have to find um there are there are like um markers around the world where like you can go up to it and you'd be like, Yeah, like set this as the, the return point for now. And you can always go back to the other one and set it back to that one if you need to. But it's a good time. I I recommend like if if you kinda like Pikmin, download the demo. Like you can play at least like if you if you really tried, you could probably play like play it for like four or five hours. Um as long as you're just paying attention to how much of the the energy you're actually putting into the ship. Um, and even if you if you get that like last piece of it, just have the Pikmin drop it before you actually um, get back to the ship. And it, it won't count, and you can just keep going about your business. Mm-hmm. But, Rich, how's, um, how has Secret Invasion been? It's, uh, you know, it is, it's good. It's good. Um, it is an espionage show. So if you like those kinds of movies and films and things like that, you're going to be interested in it. Uh, for me, it's like it's not fully hitting all cylinders for me, um, but I, I'm, it's still entertaining enough to enjoy it and watch it. Uh, but like I'm not, I'm not, I've never really been big on like espionage and spy shit. Like I don't really care. Uh, I was thinking today I was watching it. Um, you know what would make this series really, really good if it was part of Agents of Shoot. And had could you imagine? <laughs> well, well, more over, more in the idea that if it had characters I cared about beyond Nick Fury, because that's the biggest problem with this show is there's only one character I care about in it, and that's Nick Fury. That's and yeah, so, that's fair. And like, and they there there are there is two other char- There there are a bunch of pre-existing characters, and I'm not saying that I don't care about at least two of them that are in it. Um, but one of them is, I believe, only in it for the first and second episode, maybe just the first episode. Um, and the other one didn't show up until the third episode and and has been playing more of a major role since then, but still is a little, like, it's obvious that I don't care about this character at the time because it was obvious what the character was, essentially. Um, so it was just like, I was like, man, I wish... I wish they played on the whole, are they or aren't they a scroll when it comes to important key characters. Like, if, if we had Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and it's like, it was, uh, shown that friggin' Fitz, Fitz or Simmons was a scroll halfway through the series and it's like, oh no, 
and and was on the bad side, and now it's like, all right, now we have to find. Fitz. I mean, that's a very cliche Agents of Shield thing. So maybe not Fitz and Simmons because they were always never together. Yeah, but I was just say, say that like, is like that is literally every season of the show. Yeah, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, though. like if if there was a different character that we had, or like because it is, it's really you got Fury and that's it. You got Talos from from Captain Marvel, but like you've only known Talos for one episode or for one movie. Um, and then, and then there's, there's a couple of characters who have made, like, appearances, and, like, I don't really want to spoil anything, and, and, like, I believe you know Rhodey's in it, and Rhodey's in it for a couple of episodes, and I be- I don't know if this was part of trailers or whatever, but Maria Hill's in it, and it's like, alright, those characters are cool, but I'm just like, I want, I want characters that, in this universe that I actually care about in this show. And all I got is Nick Fury, which I like Nick Fury, but it's also a very different kind of story they're telling with Nick Fury because apparently after the blip, he was just depressed and just went up into space. And that's all he fucking did. You find that out in episode one that like after the blip, he goes up to sword and that's all he he's not been back on Earth since the blip. Oh, OK. So that's because I mean, he, so because he, he was blipped away, too, right? I'm not misremembering he, that. Yeah, he was him. Him and Hill were blipped away at the same time. Uh, or uh, were together when they got blipped. When they right, got right, because he got away. blipped as he was trying to call so, Captain Marvel. So it's the snap, and then it's the blip. The blip is coming back. The snap is them le- being sent away or being killed or whatever. Oh, is so that is got, that how they're differentiating it? That's how. Yeah. The, so the blip, what they're calling the blip, is when people came back. Oh, see, I thought that I thought that Marvel was calling the blip everyone disappearing because like they never referred to it as the snap because the only people. Yeah that know about the snap are the audience and like the two Avengers that were actually next to Thanos. I mean, there, there are I, a few characters in this series are saying like you were snapped away when you were snapped. Away. Okay. Like, so they, they fully leaned into it. Like once Spider-Man, I think was the first movie post end game that came out. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was the one where like they were referred to it as the blip. Yeah, at, they, they were, I, and I think what they were doing is referring to everyone coming back as the, like, the, for not the whole five years as a blip. For the whole timeline, for the five years to be known as the blip would just be weird, I guess. But, yeah, yeah I, I, I get, I get not getting that. Like, so, the series is, um, at, like, you find this out early on, so I'm, I don't care to tell it as a, a potential spoiler. Um, the reason the, the scroll are, the reason for the quote secret invasion is because ever since Captain Marvel, uh, Talos and, and Fury were, ch- and Talos, Fury, and Danvers were trying to find the scroll a new home. But once the blip happened and Fury disappeared, and I think you're maybe led to believe that Talos disappeared. I don't think Talos disappeared, but, and Fury disappeared. The scroll didn't know what was happening about whether or not they're, they were going to get a new planet. Um, and so, like, a, a subgroup of, um, of scroll, like, like a radical, basically, group of scroll cre- created themselves to now want to take Earth as their own because Fury stopped caring. And even after the blip, when he came back, he just went up to Sword. And that's it. And they, they, they explain that, I believe, in, within the first and, and or second episode, that it's just like, they, they lost trust in Fury, which is why now it's the secret invasion, and they're here trying to basically take over. Okay, and which like, is sort of in line with, with the comics, in a, in a way. Yeah. And so it's like, alright, it's, it's a good story, it's interesting. Um, there's, there's a, the, it's, it's all good, but it's just like, for me, it's, it's not like, it's not very superhero. Like, it's, it's, it, it is very good that they chose to make this as a show and not a movie because they are leaning very spy thriller on this. And it, like, it just, it works very, very well as a, as a, as a series. I think it's almost over. I think, next yeah, I think week it's supposed to be, be like six episode. episodes. Yeah, I think le- next week is the last episode. Yeah, I just, uh, I mean, like, and everything you're saying about it, like, is making me less and less like interested in watching it i mean uh, it's it's worth a watch and i but i think you might like it because you like you like spy shit more than i do yeah but like like you said like i like nick like well i should say i like sam jackson fine 
I do not like that character enough to want a series led by it. Like, I think that's part of what, why I, I don't want to watch this and why yeah. I'm just disinterested. Like, on top of, like, uh, like, to be fair, like, the Marvel shows have been good. But, like, like I was saying last week, I don't care about these movies at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I, we finally, like, I talked, like, last week, like, um, we finally watched Ant-Man and the Wasp and I thought it was about as mediocre as it could be. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm just at that point where it's like, yeah, you know, eventually I will put this show on when it's completely done, but yeah, I mean, same it's, thing with Andor. Like I hear I, Andor is amazing and it's just like, eh, that's a, that, that is a lot of hours of something that like, I don't actually think will be all that good. I, I was told from someone who is a huge Star Wars fan that I made the better decision to wait to watch Andor until it's all the way done. That it didn't really do very good week by week. And that I made a better decision by watching uh, She-Hulk weekly than I did by watching An- Andor. Wait, did you watch Andor yet? No. Okay, I didn't think so. But I like I haven't watched Andor, but I did watch the, the, the latest Mandalorian. It's, on, it's, it, that's, again, it's another series where it's like, it's a character that I didn't need a, a series for. Like, I Andor was a one-shot character in Rogue One. Like... I didn't care to know more about his backstory and history. I didn't. I don't. I don't care about him. Like, he was, he was a cool character for the movie that we had him in. But, like, d- did we really need to broaden, expand the universe on a smuggler that really... I don't, I don't, I don't know why people cared about him so much. I mean, he was interesting in the movie, but... Yeah, like, I, I don't hate that character being like expanded upon i think i like a couple weeks ago i watched like the first episode and i'm just like okay like this could be an interesting show but also it was like 50 minutes and nothing happened and i was just kind of bored through most of it it was it was star wars at least modern star wars like absolutely yeah and i think like a lot of it is like like the disney in general is just burning goodwill with a lot of their stuff by like everything being kind of the same and just not being all that good anymore like, mm-hmm. because there's so much of it, like, none of it is special, and you're just like, oh, yeah, no, we, like, we just literally saw the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you've released the same thing four times this year. Yeah. And, like, don't get me wrong, like, like the the first, like, two phases of Marvel, those movies are delightful. I, like, I have, I have, like, in recent years watched a bunch of those movies again, and it's like, yeah, no, those are still fun movies, because, like, they were doing it for the first time. Now it's like, cool, I'm watching the same jokes be told by just different characters now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. But um, it does look like next week is the last episode. It looks like yeah. six episodes is how long it is. So, like, yeah. who knows? Like, maybe maybe if I have, like, a light week in work in August, I'll try and, like... Because are these 30 minutes or are they, um like, the 50-minute episodes? Uh, Between the two. Okay. So, so like, um, let's see. Let's open up the app. Um, the first episode was 55, second was 58, third was 44, fourth was 38, fifth was 39. So it's like between 30 and 60. Okay. So, like, that's one of those, I wouldn't mind watching that, but at the same time, like, I can find something else to do with my time. Mm-hmm. Like, there's always a podcast or something to listen to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing with all the media and shit out there. Like, you don't have to watch it. You don't. Like, it, back in the day when there was water cooler talk and you had the big shows, the big, you had you had all the big shows on ABC, NBC, and Fox and whatnot. Like, yeah, that was like, you're missing out if you don't watch it. But now with streaming, if you miss it, you miss it. Just, at, there, there, is a, there is a limit to spoilers. But I, personally, if you go a month without watching the show, um, a month after the last episode airs without watching the show, you can't get mad at spoilers. Yeah, like, I, I generally am not going to get mad at spoilers. I'm just going to, like, I'm going to try to avoid them if I think it's something that I will eventually, like, watch or read. But, like, if somebody says something and, like, they just don't realize it, like, I'm not going to jump down their throat. No, well, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a level of intentional and unintentional, but, like, after about a month, if somebody is, like, if, if somebody's blatantly outright talking about how... I'm trying to think of, say, you know, Stranger Things season whatever, and you're talking about how the the girl is in a coma at the end of the la- latest season, like, and you get you you could be like, oh, I didn't watch that yet, but don't say that to the person because it's like, well, you know, I've it's been almost a year at this point. That's on you now. You're 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 you could have watched. It. It's on you. A week or two, it's fine to say, hey, come on, guys, I haven't watched it yet. 
It's only been a week. But after about a month, month and a half, you can't call no spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with you on that one. I, I remember back in the day, I had, um, I had, what was the movie? It was, I think it was Sucker Punch. It's the one where it was all the girls, they were stuck in the, uh, mental institute. Uh-huh. Um, and so the movie had been out for two years, I think, at that point. And I was at work at McDonald's. And I was like, yeah, I just watched Sucker Punch. It's a shame so-and-so died. And somebody looked over and was like, come on, spoilers! I'm like, the movie's been out for two years. You can't call that anymore. They're like, yeah, I can't. I'm like, no, it's your fault you haven't seen it now. It's two years. You obviously didn't want to see it. And mm-hmm. they got mad at me for saying, it's a shame somebody died two years after the movie came out. It's as if you were to say, you know, it's a shame Jesus dies. Oh, spoilers, I haven't finished the Bible. Like, come on now. So, like, I like I think there is just a certain amount of, like, if you're talking about something like that, it's worth just being like, hey, have you seen it yet? But, like, if somebody is in, like, a different part of a room and is just, like, listening in on your conversation, then, like, that's on them. And that's that's the thing. Like, the person wasn't in our conversation. We were in the middle of talking, and they had walked by and heard me say, person died. And they're like, spoilers, I haven't seen it yet. I'm like, it's been two years. That's on you now. Yeah. Like, if if you were talking to that person... And you had it, and you just been like, "Oh yeah, I just watched, I just watched um, Sucker Punch," and they died without like prefacing it or seeing if they've seen yeah. it. Like that's different. Then you're the asshole. No, nah, but fuck if they that. just have two years, fucking, no, like, if they it's... haven't seen it, they can't call spoilers on a thing that like, clearly no. it's not that big of a deal that they but, cared about. But see, it's it's to me, and I agree with Cobb on this. It's a dick move to say, "Hey, I just saw this movie, and so and so died," without knowing whether or not they want to see the movie, they have seen the movie, haven't seen the movie, are going to see the movie, this, that, or the other. Yes, it may be two years later, but if you open up the conversation and aren't actively having a conversation about said topic with spoiler, that is a dick move. Because it's like, all right, you're not giving them a chance to say, oh, I haven't seen it yet. How was it? What'd you think? Or, oh yeah, how about this and that? And be able to actually have a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, like there is still that, like... You know, at, after a certain point, like, it is free game to talk about it in public settings, as long as you're not, like, yelling about it from, like, the rooftops. Yeah, but if you actively go to somebody to talk to them about a movie, and you open up with, I saw this movie, and, spoiler, and they haven't seen that movie, be- and you didn't know that they haven't seen the movie, but, like, you open the conversation with a spoiler, that's kind of, again, that's, to me, that's a dick move. Whether or not it's after the two years, but it's if, if... You walk into a conversation and spoiler happens because there was already a conversation happening. That's not a dick move, and that's on you. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, but as far as um, as Secret Invasion goes, like, are you are you glad you've been keeping up with it? Yeah, like I'm not like I'm not like I'm entertained enough to be to to like watching it. It's it's entertaining. It's 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 a good series. It just doesn't a hundred percent click with me because this is like not the. Not the kind of stuff that I generally watch. Um, like, this might be more in line, even though I absolutely loved Falcon and Winter Soldier, this might be more in line with, like, more of a Falcon and Winter Soldier type series than any of the other Marvel series. And, but, like, each of the Marvel series were drastically different than the one before. So, like, if you liked Falcon and Winter Soldier, you'll probably like this one. Okay. Yeah, like, it, it's a shame. Like, I did, I did like Falcon and Winter Soldier. But it was also two characters that I like, yeah. um, and like I'm happy to watch them lead something. Um, like I said a little bit a little while ago, like I like Nick Fury fine. I think Sam Jackson's like good in most things he does, but like that character is not a character that I give any shits about in a way where I want to watch them for six episodes. I think the problem with Nick Fury in this is that he like. They are portraying him as the old disgruntled man. And, like, yeah, he is an older, more disgruntled man. But, like, he is not, he's not the awesome Nick Fury we know. He's washed up. And that's, like, kind of where it, like, maybe loses me a little bit more. But, like, he's wa- he's not washed up in a sense that he can't do anything. He's just washed up because he just, he, and it, it plays along with where they put him mentally. He's washed up because he just doesn't, he, 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 he he's not happy in life. He's depressed, and like he thought he failed because of the snap and the blip. And yeah, it's just yeah. weird. It's it's a it's a weird, interesting series. Well, 
Maybe we'll we'll check in on it again next week, see what you thought about it as a full. I did not realize yeah, it was almost over. I would have been like, oh, we'll just talk about it next week. <laughs> I don't. I I might not be able to watch it before next recording because okay. So a- after so. you've watched it, yeah. Um, how about uh book club? Book club boss level. I enjoyed it so much. It was just uh So anybody who hasn't watched it yet, um. Who doesn't know what book, Boss Level is? It is a time loop movie starring Frank Grillo and Mel Gibson, where uh, Frank Grillo, I believe that's his first name is Frank. Yeah. yeah. Um, he is he is caught in a time loop, and every time he dies, he wakes up the same morning. Um, the one thing I absolutely loved about how they did this movie, because, uh, Drew, you've heard me and Cobb complain about how many time loop episodes of Flash we've seen. Um, this one, they didn't start you with the time loop. They didn't start you with him being confused as to why he was in a time loop. It was, what was it, 60, 70 days into the time loop. Like they, It was, it was 140. Like, yeah. Was yeah. it 140? Yeah. Because yeah. it ended by like 200 and something. Yeah, he straight says this is the 144th okay. time I, or whatever. I think the I first number remember. they show is like his retelling of what happened on day 70 or something like that. So that's yeah, like probably the, where you're getting that number from. But he, we yeah. never, yeah, yeah, we never see the first like twenty. Which, like, uh, you know what? Great. I don't need to see that. Like, they do make. I think they do make mention of it from time to time, like him failing to jump out of the uh, building or him like not doing something right. Uh, but overall, for a time loop thing, I like the idea that this is like this is what's going on in his head during him finishing the loop. And not like, oh, how did it start? Or not how to start, but how did how does he get through the loop starting from, oh, what's going on? Why am I reliving the same day? Like, we don't need that anymore. We've seen that a million times in TV. Like, I thought I thought they did that really well. Um it, it honestly, I wasn't I was kinda surprised to be hit with some emotions in the movie as well. Like, there's a whole sequence with his son that I was just like, Holy shit, why am I getting hit with emotions here? I thought this was just going to be just a ridiculous action flick and just a popcorn thing, but no, they hit you with emotions pretty hard at some points. Oh, see, I didn't get any emotions. So well, I mean, you have you guys have no souls. Um, I mean, it sequence... might have helped if the movie had consequence, but it kind of I mean, doesn't because it's a time loop. But it... so, like, okay, yeah. Anyway, I, I, think, I think that's why I didn't have any like emotional tie to like. I think I know the scenes you're talking about, and it's like. That sucks, but we also know that it's just going to reset again. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's but like it's I like I did think idea, it was f- fun. Like the idea, uh, it's not about him, that it reset, but the idea that he lived that one day with his son sixty times because he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to stop. He didn't know he could have stopped it. Like he didn't know that he was supposed to stop it. So the only thing he could do is get stuck on a time loop. And just live that day with his son for the rest of eternity, basically. And, like, the, the, those scenes with him and getting to know his son when he had been an absentee father the entire time. It was just like, oh my god. That's so, like, it's sad, but it's happy sad. But it's, like, it's 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 emotional. It hit, it got me, it hit me with emotions. Yeah, no, I, like, I did it, like, I thought the movie was fun. Like, I like I was not bored by it. I You're right, like, the, the time loop, the way that they did the time loop was actually... Like as far as that those things are done was really well done. Like we didn't we didn't have to start with him confused. Um, they showed us kind of where it started, but not those early like of him failing things. Mm-hmm. So all of his failures in the movie were generally like earned trial and error. I guess would be the best way yeah. to put it. Because like like you said, there's that one bit when he like during that first run where he jumps out of his apartment window. And, um, lands on, in the, in the, like, the sand truck or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah. And he's like, it took me 15 tries to, to get that landing right. Yeah, he's like, I missed this truck 12 times and it hurts so much to land on four stories down. And then, like, the same thing, like, in that same scene, he's like, yeah, this guy yells the same thing every time. And, oh, yeah, and there's the bus. Oh, shit, did Uh, I pass the bus already? And then he flies through the bus and you, you get that. You get that like um uh roguelike thing where it's like every run they're getting just a little bit further mm-hmm. until like he, he until he finds like that perfect scenario that he can keep repeating every time. 
and it's just trying to get up to that one point and just figure out like that final boss and they they don't linger on any of those too long like they don't make us I'm trying to think of the right way to put this. They don't make us watch him do the same thing over and over and over again mm-hmm. to get to the same spot. Like, yeah. they, they make it montages instead of actually, like, all right, well, it didn't work this way last time, so let me try it this slightly different way. It's like yeah. they just they, they show us how he gets into a place once, and then they just pick up from him in that place the next time. It's like, cool, yeah, because he, he got here the same way because it's not getting here. It's getting past here. Like, yeah. we need to see the next step, not the not the previous step. And yeah, like I thought all of that was actually a lot of fun. I thought the action scenes were were pretty well done. Um I just I like I didn't personally have any connection with like the character moments, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, I think the biggest downfall of the movie was the CG for sure. The CG was bad. Um Yeah. But I mean it was uh, a Hulu movie. And at yeah, least like, most of it was quick enough that like it didn't linger on screen all that long. Yeah. True. But like some of the stuff like like I laughed a few times, like when he was just appalled at the lady for like having the gun that was uh, originally Hitler's, yeah, yeah, um, and just like uh, it was earlier, um, when he first kind of like beat that woman, and he, it was by shooting the grenade launcher at her, um, her car, and like he like stops and goes, maybe that was overkill. He's like, nah, nah, they deserved it, and like yeah. keeps le- and like goes on his way, um, which. Were, were were Pam and were, was Pam in the? No, I guess Pam was never at the diner. Whenever he died at the diner, um, I I, I, w- I was not expecting because I didn't look at the cast list or anything. Ken Jeong in it, and his his role was it was very Ken Jeong. Yeah, but the, um, like this movie had a lot of like l- like small like small role familiar faces like Michelle Yeoh as like his sword trainer. Yeah, um, uh, Will, Will Sasso. Sasso like. Will Sasso as like the head security guy. I've never seen Will Sasso do anything but comedy. Yeah, and he's always like the big goofy guy too. Like for this, yeah, for him to be like the like the mean, angry, like aggressive guy. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was great. Like it was just. It was just a fun, like silly, screw around movie. Like I, I, I've said this before. Whenever we talk about movies from time to time, it, 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 the way I rate movies are if I would watch it, if it's on TV, if I would seek it out, or if I would pass it. And this is this is definitely one where, like, if it were on TV, yeah, I'd, I'd keep it on. I, you know, I don't know that I would. I like, I had fun with it, um, like enough that, like, I, I, I'm not disappointed. I watched it. I was not bored watching it. But it's one of those like I've I've seen what it did, and I don't think I'd get any enjoyment out of seeing those scenes again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus, like, like there's certain... Like, action movies can be weird with that. Like, either, like, an action movie is so good that you're cool watching it multiple times, or you've seen all the action once, and you, you see the gimmick, and there's not really anything to it. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like personally, like, I think, like, the first Matrix movie, or, like, the first John Wick, those are, like, action movies where it's like, yeah, you know what, if those are on TV, I'll leave them on and, and watch them again. Like, like those are great. Mm-hmm. This one's more of that, like, you know what, I this was fun, like, like, it was a fun watch, but I don't have to watch it again. Like, I'll find something else on TV, or or I just won't watch TV. Mm-hmm. But you know, like everyone in that movie did a did a good job with what they had. Like, yeah, it's not like it. Like, I'm again, it was a Hulu movie. It's not like it was you know the big summer blockbuster where like they I, had like hundreds of millions of dollars and like like a an A list cast. I mean, like, fucking Mel Gibson in it, so obviously you know it wasn't gonna have a greatest cast in the world. <laughs> But like it, it had a solid cast, um, and like cause a lot of like, and a lot of the parts, like the, a lot of the known actors were like, you know, smaller parts. And yeah. even then, like this movie came out like before um, Michelle Yeoh became like super A list from um, everything, everywhere, everything everywhere all at once. All at once. Like, yeah. like she blew up after that movie. Um, like she was known if you watched like action movies or like the. Um, like especially like like the older like like Hong Kong action movies that she did a lot of in like her like twenties and thirties, yeah. Um, but like you know she was well known enough that like it was a cool cameo in that movie. And same thing with like Ken Jeong, like he's not in a ton of stuff as like a lead. Um, but like he pops up in things, and it's like oh yeah, that guy's funny. Like he's in yeah. um, there's a show on Apple Plus um called The After Party. Um, it's act- it's actually a very good show. Um, it both. Both seasons are like whodunit mysteries, um, where the only three characters that are the same in both seasons are this 
one guy who designs um escape rooms his girlfriend that he he starts dating in the first season and a police detective and they just happen to keep getting involved in places where somebody is murdered and it's usually like like an an after party for something the first one was an after party for a high school reunion um the second season was the after party from a wedding reception but um long story short uh Ken Jeong is in the second season as um the one character's dad and he's like a um he's he's a a, a Thai ice salesman so like 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 um like shaved ice yeah. um and he takes it very seriously he's constantly wearing like his branded jacket that's all like um like uh what's the fucking like the little um bedazzled and like it's, it's a very Ken Jeong role yeah it's a very Ken Jeong role but yeah I, I I thought boss level was, was fun as far as yeah. like it, it was a silly action movie yeah I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I just yeah, it's one of those just fun like it, it it knows what it was kind of movie. Like it knew not to take itself too seriously. Um, yeah, and, and and just like it, it 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 leaned on that quite a bit too. I will say I was a little annoyed at the fucking dude in like the underground video game club where he's like, yeah, we really just cater to like 1980s side scrollers like Double Dragon. And Altered Beast and Street Fighter. I'm like, Street Fighter's not a fucking side scroller. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah. I I don't I Also, it was a lot of Street Fighter 2, which was not an eighties game. Nope. No. <laughs> and actually I don't think Altered Beast was either. Unless it came out in eighty nine. It might have it might have come out in eighty nine. Yeah, uh, I, I, sounds right. Look, it's again it Holy knows shit. What it is. Altered Beast was eighty eight. Okay, yeah. That checks out because I mean the Genesis came out in 89. Well, so I actually did not realize Altered Beast was originally an arcade game. Oh, yeah. I th- I thought it was a... Sl- I-, I thought it was developed for the Genesis to be the initial pack-in. Nah. Did not- I mean, look, it's not a good game, so, like, don't know a ton about it. But also, I mean, did you did you watch the Giant Bomb, This Is The Run of that? Yeah, but I mean, how long ago was that? Forever ago, but come on, you couldn't tell from that game's mechanics that it was a fucking game designed to eat quarters? Yeah, I mean that that is true, but if you look at a lot of games from that era that even that weren't necessarily arcade games, they had a similar style. Uh, a lot of them were arcade games. like uh, I mean that that is true, but like I don't think Super Mario Brothers of... was developed as an arcade game. Uh, fair. And but it has that very a lot like that you're thinking that actually were arcade games. I mean you I mean absolutely. Like they're pretty much every side scrolling beat 'em up was at one point an arcade game. Mm-hmm. I mean, technically, the levels do scroll sideways in Street Fighter. Do they? Yeah, it's not I mean, one screen. It's yeah, it's mo- it's just the same as same as um uh, Mortal Kombat. Like it's been a like, very long time since I played like Street Fighter one or two. But like, in fact, the, I've never played levels, Street Fighter one. The levels weren't yeah, like Drew said, it wasn't one screen. Like you could move the screen sideways a little bit, not like. It wasn't like Altered Beast, where you go from beginning of level to end of level, but technically the screen does scroll sideways. Still, it's a fighting game. It's not a side scroller. Yeah, yes. you're. I, I look. I didn't really pay too much mind to that kid because I to that guy because I knew like most likely with, with a cast like this and a movie that like this, they're not going to take any pay any attention to what they're fucking saying in it. No, video game, but they fucking name drop area. Altered Beast. Like, well, I mean, they they were paid to name drop altered. I mean, yes, that is probably true. <laughs> well, yeah, was was Sega part of their credits? If Sega was part of their credits, then they a hundred percent were I paid mean, to mention altered. Legit, if they name dropped it, it probably had to. Like, I don't know that they could get away with saying copyrighted things and not. I mean, they they definitely had to pay of... Capcom to have uh, Street Fighter on there for sure. Yeah. They had to yeah, make but you know they they had all three of them playing in the background. You could see Double Dragon and Altered Beast on some screens too. Yeah, um, and at one point I believe they mentioned Contra, or am I just thinking of something else? I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember so little from this movie. <laughs> but you know, like as far as the licensing goes, it is actually interesting because they got multiple companies to um to allow like that stuff to be both name dropped and shown. Because mm-hmm. it would have been Capcom, Sega, and Tecmo? God, but, uh, the, the Double the, Dragon in, rights fucking no yeah. clue what's up with those. <laughs> in Yeah, in 2022, or in 2020, or 20, let's say 2018 when this movie was being filmed, um, 
who had the rights to all of those. Like all, I think Street Fighter. I think Street Fighter's on Nintendo on the Switch Online. Well, it's a I Capcom mean, game. No, like Capcom owns Street Fighter a hundred percent. Sega owns Altered Beast a hundred percent. Double Dragon is the weird one because that's like the. I think Tecmo was the original publisher, but I don't think they own it anymore. But Altered Beast is on Switch Online. Is Be- what I'm saying. Yeah, because, because Sega is. So, like, because w- w- I don't know. I don't know. But what I'm they, trying to say. Nintendo, Nintendo has pays... nothing to do with getting yeah. the rights for I'm games not... they don't publish. Like they don't publish. But did was Nintendo the one who purchased the rights to be able to put it on the Switch? Oh Online no, 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 no. They, like, they just um totally they they license it from the licensing. the companies. Like I think that's why it's like if you look like. Unless it's changed since the last time I loaded it up, like the Genesis doesn't get games added as frequently as the Nintendo platforms do because it's like double licensing. Like they have to make sure that like Sega is okay with licensing a game and whoever the rights holder is. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, no, like all three of the all three of the named games are from three different like owners. So like good on Hulu for like getting that shit done. Um, it also looks like apparently this movie has been in the works since 2012. Wow. Like and like Frank Grillo has been like like signed on to it since around that time. I mean, you you really think Marvel star Frank Grillo was gonna do a movie like this? Hey, <laughs> Purge two, star Frank Grillo. <laughs> Purge. Well, he's only been in one Purge movie. He's been in two Marvel movies. But he starred in the Purge movie. I know he, he was in two. He was in two Purge movies. Was he in the Was he in the third Purge movie? I think he is in the second and the fourth. I know he's in the second. That was the one where he was he like it was real big that he was being gonna be in it. I haven't I haven't seen any of the purge movies, honestly. If we do a, not... a purge book if we do a purge book club, I'm all down for doing all the purge movies back to back to back to back. Yeah, so he is in so... Purge Election Year and Purge Anarchy. So okay. I oh, do so not he's in three and four then. Or uh, what's anarchy? I'm trying he's, to it's either two and three or three and four. It's he's it... he's in the two of them back to back. Two and three. Okay. So he and and two he is like the vigilante like out there kind of like killing the killers and like helping people, yeah. um like not helping them so much as like stopping other people from being murdered, um yeah. and then in purge election year he has become like a secret service agent for the woman running for office who is trying to Stop ban the, the purge. purges yeah um and I don't think he was in he definitely wasn't in the first purge or the forever purge yeah. And he he wasn't in the first Purge movie with Ethan. No, no, because that the first one was so different from what it became. The rest, yeah, I, like I, I, that's the one I want to see the most. They were also supposed to be making like a Purge TV series. I think they um, did. I'm pretty sure that happened. I think it was a USA yeah. show. 2018 to 2019, The Purge. Oh wow! It was just called The Purge. Oh wow! Was it on USA? Yeah. Um, I believe so. Yep, USA Network. Thanks, Monday Night Raw. <laughs> the only thing WWE has ever been good for. Making me know that that show existed and was on USA. Yep. Um, oh, and it, it actually looks like Frank Grillo is going to be back for The Purge 6. Nice. Uh, which does not have a name yet. Um, I'm just too, too Fast, Too Furious? Purge 6, Tokyo Drift. There we go. We got it. Yeah, that's better. We got there. Um, so, oh, real quick, for what it's worth, Technos is who created Double Dragon originally. And Taito was the one that distributed Taito. it. Okay. Both those companies are dead. Um, Arc System Works owns the rights. Really? As of 2012, it looks huh. like. Uh, yeah. Or 2017 is when they got the right. So, you know, the makers of Blaze Bl- they own fucking Double Dragon now. I, I'm not against that. No? Nah. Um, but yeah, I, I will say as far as the purges go, the first one was actually legitimately good. Um... Because it was just, it was a family, like, that was, like, well off and had, like, one of the, the super advanced security systems. And they accidentally, like, one of the kids opened the fucking door on Purge Night and everything went to shit after that. Yeah. Because, um, I don't know, it was just, it, I guess it was more contained than those movies become. Because, like, after that, like, every every single one after that just becomes, like, bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it 100% went the way of friggin' Fast and the Furious. Fast and the Furious was just a street racing movie. Well, not a street racing movie, but it was a a, a street racing slash um, a heist movie. Yeah. Uh, which then turned into the biggest action flick in the world. The Purge was 
started as a horror movie, which turned into somehow a huge action film. Or a big action film. I wouldn't say huge. Yeah, they're like action thrillers, I guess you you could say now. Yeah. Like, they, they still have a little bit of, like, the dystopian horror thing going on, but not nearly as much. Though, I, yeah. I will say, like, I, I have not seen The Forever Purge, which was the most recent one. Um, but I have seen every other one. The, and actually, the first Purge was, I will say the first Purge was also very good. Um, because that, it was basically going back to, like, years before all of that shit went down. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, like, it's still modern, like, modern times, essentially. Yeah. But, yeah. Weird series. But, yeah. Frank Grillo from the Purge franchise, not from Marvel. It's actually, when was Captain America Winter Soldier? Uh, that was 14. Damn, you know what? Purge, the think... second Purge movie came out after Captain America. So, you're right. It was 2014. It was spring. And Purge Anarchy came out in July of 2014. Man, 2014, big year for Frank Grillo. Big <laughs> year for Frank Grillo. And 2016. Because tw- I think 2016 was Civil War, right? Probably. Man, you know what that means? Whenever the, the sixth Purge movie comes out, fucking Crossbones, Crossbones back in the MCU. Back. <laughs> coming back to the MCU. Because every, every year he's in a Purge movie, he is also in a Marvel movie. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, they could somehow bring him back with the multiverse and everything. but like, I mean, that's, that is true. He blew I mean, they himself put him, up. They can put him back together as a robot. Yeah, sure. Look, having just finished Dragon Ball last week, um, General Tao beca- gets fucking blown up by a missile and then is left in the fucking woods by himself, comes back like 50 issues later as fucking a cyborg entering the World Martial Arts Tournament. <sighs> Anything's possible. Anyway, anything else about Boss Level? No, I, like I said, it, it was it was a fine movie. Drew yeah. did not enjoy it. I fucking no. hated it. Of course. I'm not surprised. I This concept of movie is fucking, uh, does jack shit for me. You know, I, I will agree. I do, like, I've gotten to the point, I do not like time loop in anything. Um, this, at least, like, I think knowing it was a time loop, I kind of went in with slightly, like, lowered expectations. Um, and, like, I was just pleasantly surprised. It's like, oh, I don't, it, I don't have to watch everything start over. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why I, like, I enjoyed a lot of it, or enjoyed, especially the beginning. The, the beginning made me laugh. And then just the idea that, like, oh, I don't have to deal with him being like, what's going on? What's going on? Why is it the same? And, and it was just like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this for 140 days, and I'm just over it at this point. And I just go and I get drunk and then die and then come back. And yeah, like, yeah, which was, like, barely better conceptually. He was still confused why it was happening for 200 tries. But I I think, like, like the, there's a difference but, between being confused it, it, yeah. about why it's happening and being confused that it's happening. He's at least, like, by the time we pick up with him, he knows exactly what's going on. And you're not, you don't have that, like, he wakes up and immediately dies. And then he wakes up again and immediately dies. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have ten retries where he's yeah. just figuring out those first, yeah. like, ten minutes of the day. Like, it just, it, it goes right through that and it gives us that, like, upfront exposition to just kind of get the ball rolling. Mm-hmm. And, like, it does it with, like, a fun action scene and... I'm I'm always happy for a fun action scene in like a dumb movie like this. The movie like, opened up with a really fun action. Yeah, like but, but part of the pro- my problem is we then see that basically same action scene constantly. It's like okay, cool, okay, they, okay. I, you know what? Like okay, I like okay. I will give you that they they do that opening scene a few too many times compared to all of the others. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there are times where them redoing it it works better to the story than others. Um, like I like I think um near the end of the movie when he's he's in that like depression funk, um I think them doing it over and over again there like works to the story, yeah. and then the next one him like being like can't you just let me fucking sleep, and like going through the the stages again was like okay yeah you know what no it like it's been a little while like yeah like let let's see it from the beginning and like see what what he does differently this time, mm-hmm. but yeah like that. That is the problem with a lot of the time loops is at a certain point, they're always going to show you something too many times yeah. um, because there are certain things that just they work every time. There's no reason to change the way those things work. So you're just going to keep doing them that way. Um, the uh, what was I just thinking of? Um, I the, the only movie that I, I can say 100 percent having not seen it in 30 years that 
absolutely 100% nails the time loop, Groundhog's Day. I've never seen Groundhog Day. Me either. Really? Wow. Yep. yep. Just to be honest, watch. if there's a time loop movie I'm gonna like, it's it will be Groundhog. I don't know how to spell Groundhog. Be available it, somewhere. If it is, by all means, we'll do that, because I have no clue what to pick. I, you know, it, it's not just time loop. It can be time travel movies. I fucking yeah. time also loop don't give a slash fuck. time travel. <laughs> Again, time travel, perfected, back to the future too. Nothing? Really? Um, Groundhog's Day is on Netflix. Cool. Good. And, like, I will say, like, Groundhog's Day, it, again, it has been a long time. I have seen scenes of it, like, more recently. But, like, they did a very good job with that movie. And even the the monotony of, like, like Drew, like, your complaint just then of seeing that opening scene too many times. Even seeing him do the same thing over and over again. Like, Bill Murray is just funny about it. Like, mm-hmm. there's just something about Bill Murray that's just funny. And I want to say this was the last time he worked with, um... Harold Ramis, actually. Maybe. Let me see if I'm right on that. No, I don't want the actual fucking day, goddammit. <laughs> like, you Google something that could be mo- multiple things, you'd think it would just give you the thing that people actually care about, the movie. Yeah. yeah a, lot of, a lot of people search for Groundhog Day the day more often than they search for Groundhog Day the movie. I don't believe you. I've searched for Groundhog Day the day more than I've searched for Groundhog Day the movie. Because I've always been like, oh, is it Groundhog's Day? And I searched for Groundhog's Day that year. Groundhog's Day, whatever year. Oh, it is. I don't is. like it. Okay. I've, I'll be honest, I've never cared to watch that movie. Really? Yeah, I, it's no, nothing, nothing against Bill Murray or it's, like, this is, it's, the, like, I, I've, I've a love-hate relationship with time travel movies and time loop movies in general just because of, like, like I said, a lot of the time loop stuff starts with What's going on for like four, for like an hour and a half straight, or for like an hour, or for a half hour straight? It's what's going on? I just did this. What's going on? I just did this. Didn't that happen yesterday? For like three days until they realize what's going on and that they're in a time loop, and that to me gets very boring, um, and monotonous. And so like when when like that's some of the worst episodes of the Flash were the fucking time loop episodes because it was like, huh? Didn't this just happen yesterday? Didn't I just do this yesterday? And it's four fucking episodes in the entire series that did this. And it's like, it's just, it's a dumb intro. If like, this is why I really liked boss level is because it intros with, I've been doing this for 141 days. Like there, yeah. there are, there are good concepts to, uh, time loop movies, even even whatever the fuck you want to call it, live, die, repeat, or 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 actually, that that's another one that that does. Like, I think that, do, that one does time loop very like, well. Like he, it is, it is the the um the the normal. What's going on? I just died, huh? Why am I here? But like they skip past that so fast, and then it's just, like they do the time loop very good to points where it's like. He's at one point he's training and he breaks his leg so she just kills him and like that's great. So like the idea of like a guy like the idea of a guy stuck in it in in Ponsatani on Groundhog Day over and over to me just does not sound entertaining. Oh, but it's Bill Murray. It's great. Bill Murray's great, sure, but look, man, I'm... this movie this movie was selected to be preserved in the Library of Congress. Aren't like so all movies like, preserved? All, yeah, <laughs> I mean there are a lot of them. Yes, not all, but many. Um, but yeah. So, so, so you guys, Drew, you want to do Groundhog's Day for the next one? Yes. Cool. Next book club, Groundhog's Day sure. in two weeks. That's fine. Hey, hey, at least it's on Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just making a note. Um, anything else you want to say about boss level? No, nope. But before we move on, uh, since we are talking about movies and stuff like that. I guess maybe we should comment on the fact that, oh, actors are now on strike, too. Oh, right. That was just this week, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Friday. Um, they, they announced that they're going to be on strike starting Friday. So any production that was already that wasn't already on hold due to the writer's strike is now fully on hold. Yep. Which also means I would hate to have to go to San Diego Comic-Con this year because Dude, I no saw, one's going to be there. Um, I saw something... Oh fuck! What was it? Some movie premiere because none of the 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 cast was going. They were just having like the Muppets show up or something like no, that. No, wasn't it Haunted Mansion? And it was the uh, yes, just the Disney 
characters. Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. that is exactly what it is. Yeah. Um but so there is a caveat to to this though. Um certain TV shows and movies are getting around the filming stuff like How- House of the Dragon and um um the fucking Wheel of Time, I think it is. Yeah, Wheel of Time. Um because they are filming in Europe and uh, the majority of their actors are actually members of a uh, UK European union that cannot strike in solidarity or anything like that with SAG. Um, they actually are not able, like the, they are still able to work and it does not like blacklist them from anything. Yeah. Um, so a lot of those like stuff like that will still be filming. Um, in some cases, like the SAG members that are on those productions that can't um, be a part of it are just like they're just going to film around them essentially. Yeah. Well, there's even um Dropout, which is college humor. They have enough content to get them through the end of the year, but they are not filming anything new until the SAG after strike is over. Oh, they, wow. They aren't like they they can film uh because like what they do isn't part of SAG. They're a different group, but in solidarity they are not doing it. Sam Reich, who is part of SAG and is the, the CEO of Dropout, is like, we're not doing it. We're not doing it anymore. Uh, until I mean, good we're, for them. We're, we're, and even Critical Role has come out and said, like, we can also, con- they're going to continue to do Critical Role, um, but, like, and all of their current appearances, unless they hear otherwise from, like, their guild, that they should stop in solidarity or whatever. So, I so, did like, see... They- Oops, sorry. Hold on. Yeah, no, that was it. Well, I was going to say, I did see that Sam Reich tweeted that he was going to ask about still possibly doing things. If SAG agreed and any of the people wanted to still do things. Yeah. But he wasn't going to, like, make anyone. I didn't see if he had a follow-up to that or not. It was a whole big, like, Mm -hmm. tweet thread. And I think a lot of the, the, um, a lot of the cast on Dropout are striking in solidarity with them. So they, they, they're, like, they're, they're not, they don't have any plan, they have halted production, and don't have any plans to film anymore for the time being, is, I think, what I remember reading. So yeah, like, there's, there, it's, it's, it's wild, just to think that, like, nothing's being made now. Every, it's, I, I keep seeing on, 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 on Google, like, I keep getting, um, uh, news notifications of, like, Oh, Marvel X Marvel movie is being postponed, and this Marvel movie is being postponed. I'm like, well, yeah, because no one's there to make it right now. Of course, it's being postponed. No one's making it because everyone's on strike. Exactly. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, like, but, like I, I don't, I don't think we talked about it. Did you see what, like, some of the like the studios has have come out and like said about shit? Um, not a hundred. I, I've seen like, I've seen like some studio heads say like, oh yeah, we tried to make a, a fair agreement and they they said or, or Fran Drescher, fucking Fran Drescher of all people, is the president of SAG which is, just blows my mind she's awesome, but like, I would not have expected the nanny to be the president of SAG um, but they're like, yeah, Fran, uh, the president and, and SAG just would not agree to any of our terms it's like, well yeah, because you guys are making 17 billion dollars a year and you're not paying your actors because you want to use AI now Kyle, well, and like, are, are you there was also the- uh, the the quote about the writer strike where they were like ah we'll just wait them out till they all lose their homes yeah I saw like, that like, too yeah yeah one of them said that that they're basically just yeah eventually they're just gonna be homeless and they'll need to work so like it's not that's not hurting us yeah um uh Bob Iger the CEO of Disney um while at a literal billionaires retreat surrounded by nothing but billionaires said that their demands were unreasonable. <laughs> and it's like, like I've seen a, I've seen like act like a bunch of actors come out since like that strike started. That like 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 more well known actors like this isn't like about them. Like they get that they're well off and they get paid in a way that like like yeah. they make enough money to like sustain their lives. But like it's like the people that don't like um this is what they the, like, they wanted to start um they wanted to pay background actors for one day of work, yeah. scan them. And then use them as AI forever with yeah. no credit or payment after their their one day of pay. Which their um uh their their caveat to that was like, well, no, we tried to we tried to say that it was just for that production, but it's still like 
you're trying to pay a background actor one day for maybe 10 days worth of work and that's yeah. fucked up and, it's, and no. it's the same thing with the writers like they're they're hiring writers to to spend like a month writing something and then firing them before production starts and bringing in somebody cheaper to help with like on set rewrites. rewrites as yeah. like as needed for like dialogue that's not quite working but yeah. they're they're hiring, hiring the slightly more um experienced person to do like the initial script and then that person is just like kicked out and it's like yeah yeah, no, like, like you guys are all billionaires, and you don't it's, want to pay these people that, like, are, like, middle class at best. And it's even, like, royalty fees. Like, I saw somebody they who made a very, fairly popular show uh, posted online that their royalty fee check for, like, whatever show was that recently came out, they got 27 cents in royalty fees oh, from that show. Oh, it was Mandy Moore for This Is Us. Okay, there you go. Yep. When, when This Is Us went to, um... Netflix or wh- whatever streaming platform it went to, she got a she got a residual for like eighteen cents. Yeah, like which like I, it's Mandy Moore. She's probably got all the money. Well, actually, has she really worked that much lately? I mean, she she was literally on one of the most popular television shows for like eight years. Yeah, so she's probably made set. So like the eighteen cents probably doesn't affect her. But like again, you're you're talking background actors. You're talking. The, the the people who are trying to make it in the in the industry that can't anymore, and it's becoming increasingly like it was already hard to become an actor or or performer, and now you're making it increasingly more impossible or, or in, in, in unlikely due to not paying them. When you got fucking Bob Iger walked away last year with like twenty eight billion dollars, yeah, of his to own do literally money. nothing, yeah. And and then, and then and then then like the, a lot of the stuff they're arguing for is to take away the use of AI. Black Mirror is supposed to be satire, not real life. And like the first episode of Black Mirror this season is about using AI to write TV shows and create TV shows and using AI likenesses. And it's like, are you kidding me, Netflix? You released this, and you're not going and and you you're trying to fight it. Like, oh my god, this. Don't any listeners don't be shocked if there's no new shit that comes out in the states over the next year at this point. Um, I, I, but I don't know. Those CEOs might start losing a uh, billion dollars over the next year, and so they might want to make that money back. No, the problem um, is they they will still keep making that money. It's just they will then come out and be like, "Oh yeah, well we can't make this movie because uh, the studio doesn't have the money," but they're yeah. still going to collect the same paycheck. Exactly, exactly. Um, but obviously, we support the striking actors, and we still support the striking writers, um, because they deserve fair wages, and, yeah. and like, to not have their jobs stolen by the computers. Yeah, like, there are plenty of actors that are drastically overpaid, but, like, for every, for every like, Tom Cruise making, you know, multi-million dollar for, like, a cameo in a movie... Um, there's like a dude whose like name you don't even know that's making like twelve bucks an hour for thirty hour days. Yeah, yeah, which isn't even fucking possible. And honestly, just wait until like we we have the writer's strike. We had a director's strike, or there was a an impending director's strike that they were able to sign off contracts. Um, we now have the actor's strike. What about like the 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 set set worker strike and stuff like that? Like, it, what it, what are they? Like, Honestly, I, I feel like all of it, that's probably going to likely happen too. If they can't, if, if, if all of the, I, I think there's going to be a lot of crew strikes or, or crew, like the crew are probably all going to be looking for support because they pro they're, they're also the ones that get paid 12 bucks an hour to hold the boom for 20 hours a day and, and probably don't even have health insurance. Yeah. I actually saw something about that. Like, like PAs on, on sets, like. They don't get health insurance. Like, the, mm-hmm. there's a ton of stuff that they don't get. They get, and on top of that, they get treated like shit. But yeah. like, they just keep doing the job because they're trying to like, they're trying to get into the industry to work like a different, like, yeah. actual paying job with with benefits and all. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing, the whole thing is crazy. I I don't know if you saw, but apparently, um, like networks are already getting to the point where they don't have anything. So like, Miss Marvel is actually going to air on ABC soon. Really, and no, um, the sh- the show Yellowstone, which I think is on like Showtime or Stars, 
it's like the real popular like western like modern day western show um that is going to air on like some random cable network i think because yeah they're... like wh- whoever owns the network that they're on basically is going to air it on a like more readily available channel cuz yeah they're running out of stuff to show because no one's going to come to their channels cuz if why watch why watch reruns when you have netflix and hulu and everything else like what's the point of reruns yeah exactly when you can just watch reruns on netflix <laughs> Yeah, why, which I mean, like, the problem watch... is like net- Netflix is part of the problem in this because they are yeah. they are one of the big um, perpetrators in in why the strike is happening. Yeah, but I think I saw I saw an article like the top ten or top eight like grossing uh, Hollywood CEO studio CEOs and like four of them were WB, two of them were two or three of them were like Disney. Netflix was only one, like, but like Fox had like three or something like that. Like, it's, it's disgusting disgusting agreed um anything else either you guys want to say about sag or the sag strike i should say nope rich no okay you you went quiet there for a minute yeah i did you okay over there i am i just got distracted with my phone what an asshole anyway um so last thing i read um this week um trevor noah's book born a crime Mm -hmm. um what what a crazy fucking life that dude has had um I also had no, so I know almost nothing about South Africa. Mm -hmm. Um, other than occasionally when people are from South Africa, they have an accent that sounds like it could also be from Australia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but like. We're also British, I think. Ah, British, Australian, New Zealand. They all, they all, they all have similarities. Yeah. Um, but apparently like that place, at at least up through like the nineties, fucking sucked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, apartheid. <laughs> yeah, so like again, I know nothing about that. Like this was the first time I'd really ever heard about it. Um, like holy shit! Like he's talking about stuff in like the late eighties, early nineties, and it's like that shit. Like sounds like things that were going on in the U.S. in the fifties and sixties. Mm-hmm. It's like geez, and like yeah. and actually worse. Yeah, in 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 some like not worse by like necessarily what was happening because like. The U.S. had, like, people in the U.S. did some truly heinous things, but, like, laws as written were, like, almost worse in some ways. Like, I I don't know for sure if it was a crime punishable by law to have, like, an interracial marriage or relationship um, in the U.S., but it was there. Like, a man would spend up to five years in prison and a woman up to four if they had a child together and were mm-hmm. of different races. And, like... Like, that's insane. So, like, like um, Trevor Noah, like, he basically, like, if he was outside, he could not be with his, like, family directly. Like, he had to either walk ahead of them or with, like, a neighbor or something like that that looked lighter skinned so that, like, basically his mom wouldn't get arrested. And they had to lie about, like, um, like who his father was and stuff like that. And then he just couldn't see his father at all unless they were, like, essentially inside. Like... That shit's absolutely insane. Um, Almost as if this world sucks. Yeah, like, like it's one of those things. It's like you, like you know, even today there are countries and places where people are still awful. I mean, like more America. so. Like, like I was gonna say, even beyond like America, <laughs> where like, like, like America has like pockets of this country that are just the most despicable pieces of shit ever. Uh-huh. There's, um, there's, a, there's a reason I will never watch the World Cup. Besides the fact that it's soccer, um, that's a shitty organization. And, of course, they were at Qatar this past World Cup, which is super anti-LGBT. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, if you just walked hand-in-hand in hand with, with someone of the same sex, you're getting arrested and probably killed. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Like, it, it, it honestly hits a little different, like, listening to... Because I, I, I listen to the audiobook for the most part, like... I, 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 um, I got the, the ebook and the audiobook, so I was kind of switching back and forth. But, like, mm-hmm. Trevor Noah narrated the audiobook. So, like, hearing him tell these stories from, like, his childhood and everything like that, where it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, like, you, you see some of that stuff on the news, like, talking about, like, places in, like, the Middle East or China or, like, like, Africa and stuff like that. But, like, hearing somebody that, like, you're familiar with from, like, TV and comedy and things like that and just being like, man, like that is one one fucking hell of a way to like be raised, um, and just like the 
the the book is it's both like autobiographical where like he is telling these stories that like do hit very hard but like it's also a comedy book like like he he's funny in it um as much as he can be while talking about certain things Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. like there's one part that like it it was the only part that like legitimately laughed at like like unencumbered by like everything else going around like there were there were parts that were funny and like like i laughed but there's one bit at the point where he's talking about like like his high school life where like he basically started like he basically became like a like a dj by pirating music um and he got hired to do like a like a school dance but it was for like a jewish school in in the area he's from and one of his friends who was like the hype man dancer for like his his dj djing gig um, his first name was Hitler. Oh, Jesus. And like, like he, he goes on to explain in the book, he's like, that was a very common name in South Africa. Um, they were not taught who Hitler was in school. Like they didn't know anything about that. So like, there are just European names, um, famous European names, I should say, were just super common. Okay. So like, you'd occasionally have like Hitler's, Mussolini's, stuff like that, just because they didn't know what, the, what they meant. They, they didn't know what the, the like, connection was um so like his friend hitler starts dancing and stuff like that and trying to hype up the crowd and him and like the other people with him are like chanting like go hitler go hitler go hitler (laughs) at a jewish only dance (laughs) and what like one of the administrators or teachers basically comes up and like flips out at them but like does not explain what what the problem um Mm -hmm. because she assumes how could they not know what the problem is Right. Yeah. So he thinks that it's like a race thing and starts like arguing with her back. And it was just it was one of those things where it's like, this is the most awkwardly funny situation I think that you could have in a, in a situation like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like uh, other than that, like the dude just like his, his fucking mom got shot in the head and survived like and then apparently made a joke the next day about it. Jeez. Like, so like he. Like, it's the end of the book, and he's telling the story where, like, his ex-stepdad essentially, like, showed up and was just going to kill everybody. And he was not there. Um, And he ended up shooting the mom in, like, the leg and then shooting her in the back of the head as she tried to dra- drive away. Um, And her other son was able to, like, get the car going and, like, drive away and get her to a hospital. Um, And all all Trevor knew going into it was that she had been shot in the head and he just assumed like, there's no way she's surviving being shot in the head. But apparently like it missed everything. Like it was mm-hmm. like, it, it was like base of the skull and it just kind of, it, it bypassed everything important and like kind of came out like the nasal cavity in a way where it just kind of like tore like a flap of skin open. Yeah. So like painful, terrible, but like about as good as a headshot could be to somebody. Yeah. Um, and she apparently, like, according to this book, um, while he was still looking, like, concerned and scared and, and everything for his mom, um, she joked and said, at least you're finally the best looking one in the family. <laughs> I'm just like, man, that lady is a fucking badass. Right? Yeah. It's like, like, the whole book, like, like every story about his mom, she j- like, he would basically, like, explain that, like, like, she was the biggest hard ass. Like, she did not let him get away with anything. She did not give up on anything. I'm just like, man, fucking good for her, because that... Everything that, that he described leading up to that, like, that just sucks. But, yeah, super fascinating book. It's not very long. Um, I want to say it was, like, 240-ish pages. Um, and, like, the, the audio book is, like, I don't know, eight hours, six hours, something like that. Well, like, well worth checking out. Um, highly recommend the audio book, too, since he does actually narrate it himself. So, like, um, different parts of the story, like, he will speak in some of the different languages that he would have spoken where he grew up. Because, like, he, one of the things he does go into also is, like, there's a bunch of different languages spoken in South Africa. Um, and his mom was very insistent that, like, his first language be English, but that he was going to basically learn every other language that they spoke down there. So, like, like some of the stories he was telling was just, like, he could go up to people that, like, maybe couldn't communicate otherwise and have a conversation with them kind of, like, no matter where he was. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like... At, when he's doing that and narrating it, like, he would actually speak in those languages and then, like, say again whatever he, he would have said in, um, in English, which is in the books too, but it's one of those, like, reading words in a language that you don't understand means almost nothing. So it's just like, like, it's just 
typed out there, but hearing the person actually say it and then like tell you what it means, like that, it kind of hits a little differently. Oh yeah, and, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it's Kasa is how you pronounce the his language. Is one of his second languages uh, is a very hard language to both read and speak. So yeah, I can understand uh, that. Yeah, th- there was one other like like legitimately funny story in there um for for his uh, like what was essentially his senior prom um one of his friends had like basically made a deal with him that he would set him up with like a very attractive girl um if like he would like cut him in on more of um at that time in high school he was selling burn cds like that's how he was making making money um if he would like cut him in on like on like that that gig um so his friend set him up with with somebody um never told him that the girl did not speak any languages that he spoke. Oh, jeez. So, like, and, it, like, he, he goes on to explain, like, he met her several times, and, like, they hung out in groups of people. But other than, like, like um greetings, like, hello, goodbye, like, sort of thing, they never had, like, a one-on-one conversation where he realized that she didn't speak anything that he spoke. Um, And, like, the only people that had, that he had ever, like, when he thought back on it, the only people that, like, spoke to her that also spoke to him were like his friend who set them up and um his stepdad who was an asshole and thought it was funny and his stepdad happened to speak that language too so like knowing that his stepson didn't that he didn't like he just let it go but like it, it was actually very funny that like they get to the dance and he he finds out literally when they get to the dance because she won't get out of the car and like they can't communicate with each other and like somebody else comes out and goes Dude, you know she doesn't speak English or anything else that, like, you know. <laughs> and, like, that's where he has that, like, that movie moment of just, like, oh, it's been, like, three months and I have never had a conversation with this girl. It's very funny. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Great book. We're, we're worth the 240 pages. Nice. Or however long the, the audio book was. Um, Good job showing me up on my New Year's resolution. <laughs> Do you want to know how many books I've read this year? No, because I've read zero. <laughs> I'm going to tell you anyway. It's it's at least seven. I'm gonna would say like to, it's fifteen. Would you like to take? You want to say fifteen? Yeah. Um, I am currently at not including like comics and manga and stuff like that. No. Um, I am currently at thirty-five. Good for you. Thanks. That's 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 too many books. That's why you don't play video games anymore. You read too many books. I read at night. Play more. Like video before games. bed. Play video games before bed. I can't. The video games are downstairs. Play video games before bed. Play video games and then go to bed. No, like, I go, I lay in bed, and while I'm getting, like, in bed, like, I, I read a book. And I, I listen to audiobooks, like, while I'm on commutes for work sometimes, too. Yeah, and I'm just giving you a hard time. Look. Play more video games. Look, you could do it, too. I can't, get, because... Get on that New Year's resolution. I, I can't, because when I'm done playing video games, I go to bed. <laughs> well, I stop don't, playing... I don't read while going to bed. I just go to bed. Start well, streaming reading the books. Like, yeah. read out I loud. Could, I, that that is that that's a is category. A category. Do it next month. That's, that's no. your streams all of August. I, this is I read reads bad. books. I read bad. No, it's Th- this is how you're gonna read better though. No, I I already get self conscious enough reading dialogue. I'm not gonna sit here reading a book out loud. <laughs> I Can I use bit. my channel points to uh, to instead of suggesting a game that you do a book? Yeah. Can can no. you make it a channel point redemption? No. You guys like, probably like, don't have enough channel points to do that anyway. That's what no, that's what I'm saying. Like make it like a channel point redemption, like a thousand points gets you like one chapter read. No. That's I I just I don't I just I won't. I don't read good. I read bad. Um so. But maybe this will make you read gooder. I <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I I think I think the not read good is less about the amount of reading that I do and more about my brain is broken. I think I'm not like, going to say you, for sure. Do you think you have like dyslexia or something? Some some form of that, yes. Like some it's not I don't get letter, letters jumbled, but I get lo- like I get everything jumbled on a page. I will reread things, I will go back and forth on things. I just the- literally don't read good. I mean, that sounds and, more like ADHD. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say like it, it, that. Well, yeah, that's why I said my definitely some something. form of my. That's why I said some form yeah. of my brain is broken and not yes. like legit, like not saying dyslexia, not saying it, just some form of my brain is broken, and which is why I don't read good. Which is why reading is a big deal to me. I wish I could I do, tell you to go see a specialist, 
but that is so impossible <laughs> in fucking America. <laughs> to go see a specialist is sixty dollars a fucking session. I know. That's why, like, 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 realistically, like, that is what you should do. But like, yeah, I understand I, why it's a thing that you're not going to do anytime soon men, because it, it's health, just it's cost prohibitive. And mental health is expensive as hell. Yeah, especially under my insurance. Yeah, so exactly. Like, it it sucks. But yeah. if you just stop playing video games like ten minutes earlier, you could read for ten minutes. But that that's even if I were to stop playing video games ten minutes earlier, that's ten minutes early. That ten minutes wouldn't have wouldn't actually ever happen because I'm always pushing the game like. 30 minutes longer just to get to a safe point or a, a good stopping. Like, I mean, like I, with Final, I do with that Final too. Fantasy, Final Fantasy, it was like yesterday. I was like, all right, it's it's 940. Let's finish this quest line that we're on and and go and, and call it. And it was 1030 by the time I finished the quest line. Which, and that was only one leg of the quest of three that I did throughout the night. It took yeah, me I, 45 minutes. I was going to say, like, for me, it's like if I'm pl- like... I will play games like like during like in the evening like I'll grab like the Switch or the the Steam Deck or something like that. Um but like I'll stop around like 9. Like it's rare that I go any later than that, but like I'm also not streaming. Like but, and and you also go to bed at 9:15. Hey, 9:45. Give, give me a little credit. Even if I'm not streaming, I don't go to bed till almost 11. Exactly. And like or, so or like after 11 o'clock. Well, after 11. So o'clock. I go I come up to bed at about 10. And then, like, for between 15 and 30 minutes, I read, and then I go to bed. Like, I basically use, like, the ten, the, the 15 to 30 minutes of, like, lying in bed to get tired. Um, because, like, the walk upstairs, and it, like, wakes me up enough that, like, I'm still tired and want to go to sleep, but I'm not tired enough to fall asleep. And, like, I also just take a long time to fall asleep. Kind of like how you don't read good, I don't sleep good. You're, I mean, and yeah, your brain is probably broken as to why you don't sleep good. And I can't just tell you to practice sleeping, can I? Come on, I mean, now. you can. You Jack absolutely can. I, I Bob, try. Start streaming yourself sleeping. I don't want to stream. D- people do that. People do that. They they do that. That is true. People are fucking weird. But yeah, Rich, read a fucking book once in a while. You fucking. I want to. Nerd. I want to. <laughs> I just don't read good. It's a sh- it's a shame. Like I, like even I would even say like do audio books, but like you 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 have other stuff going on so often like. You could I do mean, it like I, while you walked um, Chase, because you you, you mean, go for like an hour walk every day, right? Half, half hour, half hour. But like I could, I could, I could walk Chase, but then it's like, or not, I not, I could walk Chase. I could do it while walking Chase. I could listen to audiobooks while working, but it's like I that, literally, like I kind of already do with a lot of the um, actual plays and um, um, a, a theater of the mind shit that I listen to. Like I already do, kind of do like audiobooks but it's like i i i I, if i'm gonna i like i uh, i guess maybe in a way i'm a purist if i'm gonna read i'm gonna actually read it like i'm and i like no no offense to anybody listening to audiobooks or whatever i just when it comes to me when it comes to listening to an audiobook when it comes to listening to anything 80 percent of the time i'm not actually listening to it it's just background noise yeah and to be fair like i cannot listen to like an audiobook while doing most things like if I'm working, even if I'm doing something mundane, um, I, I, I my mind wanders. Mm-hmm. Um, the the only time I can do like an audiobook and actually like focus on it is like walking the dog, doing yard work, and sometimes my commutes. It depends like how tired I am though. Like I have mm-hmm. on Friday, I have my client that's way up in Bethlehem. I can't listen to audiobooks on those drives because um, I have to wake up way too early and they're way too long. Like. I just, I get tired and my mind wanders. So, like, I get that. I also listen to things at, like, two and a half times speed. So, like... No, I mean, I've... I've All my podcasts are 1.2 speed anymore. Podcasts are, are usually 1.5. Well, it's... Um, audiobooks are usually 2. 2 to 2.5. It's, it's variable. It's... If it's an interview podcast or just a chatting podcast, it's 1.2. Uh, but if it's, like, a, 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 a story podcast, it's one time. It's just normal. So, it's, like... To get those story beats and those stops and those breaks, I still get those. Nah, I crank that shit up. No, I you, you need to get those breaks. You need to get those stops. You need to you need to you need to get all that. Nope, I need to get through as much content as possible in the shortest amount of time. No, you don't. You don't need to get through any content. Who cares anymore? There's too much through... out there. Who cares to get exactly? Through any of it? There's too much out there. Yeah. So stop. 
Just stop going through <laughs> content. Just there's no more content. There's too much. There's no more content because there's too much content. Dude, there's somebody on a, on a Discord server I'm in that they listen to audiobooks at three and a half or four times speed if the app allows it. How? I, how do you? How do you I have. Understand understand what is being I have said? no idea. Like, like I said, I've the same tried, thing. I've I've tried listening to one point five and that was too fast for. Yeah. No, I can't do anything over normal speed. Yeah, one point five, like that. That is my my kind of average listening speed for most things. Um, like there are occasionally, like there are some, like there are some podcasts or like and stuff like that where like I do like it slow down a little bit more, like maybe like a one point two, one point three. Um, and there's some audiobooks where though just the way the person speaks, anything over like a one point five, one point six, and it's not that I can't hear them; it's that their voice actually distorts in a weird way. I mean, I feel for me anything over like uh, maybe 1.25 isn't bad, but like I tried doing podcasts at 1.5 and I'm like, this all just sounds wrong. <laughs> like that's fair. Yeah, like like sometimes like it it, it kind of gets pitched up a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I get it. It's it is 100 percent not for everyone. But like I I don't like that like kind of like a lot of people just on podcasts, audiobooks, stuff like that. Like they talk slow because they are trying to like spend time getting their thoughts out getting their thoughts together be clear be concise i can understand what they're saying if they're just talking a little bit faster so i just make them talk a little bit faster it helps on those like three hour fucking jeff gersman podcasts yeah oh also i don't listen to a podcast that's longer than an hour i i cannot listen to a podcast longer. the only podcasts like that have ever clicked for me they all run too fucking long like there's only like two of them that that run around an hour everything else is like hour and a half two and a half i'm like Come on, guys! Like, can't can't you slow it down a little, or not slow it down? Like, shorten it down a little bit. He says, as we're at two hours, <laughs> and one minute. but once I run the fucking thing that truncates silence, we're, we're going to be at like at an hour forty-five. And still, look, I said everybody else. I don't listen to this. I know you guys don't either. Yeah, no. <laughs> but actually, with that, um, anything else you guys want to talk about? Nope. No, that's about it. All right. Well, in that case, we are going to get out of here. Um, if you'd like. To, oh, actually, two weeks, uh, whatever day that is. Um, is that like August already? Yeah, holy shit. August 3rd, we'll have our next book club, which is going to be Groundhog's Day. Oh, we're uh, not, uh, that, no, that's a Thursday. Yes. I oh, always yeah, announce okay. the re- day it that it... Release, it, it rele- okay, never mind. So I'm like, <laughs> that's my birthday. I am not recording on my birthday. Yeah. Um, so August 3rd will be Groundhog's Day. Um, and then... If you'd like to um, find more more of our content, you can head over to www.one-quest.com. You can also help us out by supporting us at patreon.com slash onequest. If you can't support us there with your dollars, though, you can go to your favorite podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Um, the other ones are out there, too. Um, review us, rate us, subscribe to us. All of it helps. You can also find us on social media, facebook.com slash onequestonline or at one underscore quest on instagram and twitter our youtube channel is youtube.com slash one quest video and you can always send us emails to social at one dash quest.com rich what's your streaming stuff look like it's still final fantasy uh maybe maybe start in remnant next week or at some point because remnant 2 comes out uh technically next week but pre-order access is this weekend uh, so come check me out. I'm back on twitch.tv slash b underscore walnuts as well as youtube.com slash at b walnuts. Uh, support me more on YouTube than Twitch because Twitch is, again, doing more stupid shady shit. So, did I they like there. roll back some of their stuff? Uh, no. So they added, uh, YouTube has this thing on their live streaming platform called Super Chats where you can donate money and it's yeah. a 70 30 split or something like that, um, to YouTube. But, uh, Twitch is now also doing that at a 70 30 split. Um, no, f- if you're going to send me money in chat, just donate to me and say, hey, I donated because I don't want 30% of whatever you're paying to go to Twitch or YouTube. I like I already I already feel bad enough as it is any subscriptions or bits that are sent to me because it's a 70 30 split or 50 50 split on Twitch. Um, but yeah, this is not the 70 30 you're asking for Twitch. Do better. You suck. And with that. We will be back next week with something else to talk about. Thanks for listening. Bye. See you. Bye.